Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be following Patty Beauty's Beauty Secrets Get Ready With Me. Sounds weird, I know, but... I just want to feel my best. It is one of those days, but I don't want it to be like heavy makeup. I want to be a glossy, glowy, best version of myself kind of a look. I saw her video and I thought I wanted to try some of her techniques. So I thought that would be a fun video for us to try out today. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. I have already primed my face with the Stila All About Blur Blurring and Smoothing Primer. I put this on top of the water cream from Tatcha. She starts off with primer, which she doesn't show applying on camera. So I just did the same and I used my normal two primers, which is the Passion Pro Partner in Primer Dewy Pore Minimizing Face Primer with Hyaluronic Acid. Like I always say, longest name ever. And then I went in with the Essence Fix and Last Makeup Jelly Primer as my base. So these are both part of my project pan, so I try to include them in my everyday. This one's almost finished. I'm having to unscrew it to get the last dregs out. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the Banana Bright. I like putting this on kind of after skincare because I do feel like it has a tiny bit of a makeup priming component. Then she goes ahead and uses uh, the Ola Henriksen under eye brightener, which I do not have. So I'm going to be using the Essence Hydro Hero under eye stick. And I'm just gonna put a little bit under here. I mean, it's not brightening in any sense of the word, but it definitely is moisturizing for your under eyes. So just to prep for concealer. It is a really long video, so I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the parts because she definitely talks a lot. So I'll just be popping up the clips of her actually doing the steps for the makeup routine. I'm also red on my head because I just scratched it and then I have a little pimple, a little friend in my eyebrows. So please ignore that. So I forgot to put my hair back. So let's just do that quickly. So I like using this Laneige sleeping mask. I use this as my gloss during the day as well. What I have found works beautifully. Game changer is a silicone scrubby like this and you just gently massage the lip. So I don't have the Laneige lip sleeping mask. So I'm using the Dr. Pawpaw Rich Cocoa Balm. It's a multi-purpose soothing balm with natural pawpaw extract. So I'm sure most people know this, but it's just like a brown color one. And I'll get some out. It's also highly moisturizing and adds like a slight tint. And then I have one of these silicone scrubby things. I usually use them to clean my brushes, but I'm gonna go ahead and scrub my lips with this. I thought she used a lip scrub, but it's just a balm. I feel like it's pulled off some of the dead skin, but other than that, I don't think it does much, to be honest. It hasn't really done much for my lips. A scrub would have done better, but we'll see what the outcome is at the end. Okay, so now we are gonna go in with a brightener right in the corner here. So for brightener, I'm using one of these. It's literally one of my oldest makeup products, and it is from Forever 21. It's the Color Correcting and Contour Kit. So on the front it says over there brightness. So I'm going to take a little bit of that on my finger and I'm just going to place it right where she did. I know I said in one of my videos where I used that that I would get rid of it but I'm glad I didn't. So now I'm going to go in with my concealer. I am using the Hourglass Silk Vanish. So for concealer I'm going to be going in with my Rimmel Kind and Free that was in my project pan last year and she adds quite a lot. I still haven't even got as much as she does and put the placement the same as she did. Okay, so that's kind of the placement she does. I just put it quite high under that eye, but that's kind of the placement, but it's a lot of concealer in my opinion. Then I'm gonna go ahead and also use a little paddle brush like she does. This one's just from Revlon and go ahead and blend everything Up out. On the sides of the nose, a little bit under the nostrils, common area to get red. And then I'm gonna kind of fan out that edge. All right, this is already looking really, really nice. You can see that just even doing this makes this area just kind of go boom. I like to start on the jaw 
and I go straight down. Do you see how that just creates, like my whole jaw just came to life. I go underneath, boom, 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 boom. Then she kind of does the underpainting technique and I know she's been doing it for ages, but she kind of shades everybody who thinks they came up with it. But anyway, I'm going to use this same palette from Forever 21 and a like flat brush, sorry, it's a bit dirty, but um, she uses kind of something like a paintbrush, but this is the closest thing I have. So I'm gonna grab, um, I think the shade, if not, I'll mix these two, but let's try this one over here. And she starts with her ear here and then underneath. And then she takes it from about here and does a line. So it's kind of just above that line over there. So I'm just going to, my brush is a lot thicker than her, so maybe I should squish it. I've ad definitely added more than she did. We are gonna now be super extra and go into Danessa Myricks. And then she takes a different cream bronzer, which I do not have, and a like a slightly angled brush, and she does it on her forehead. So I think I'm gonna just take the same shade and try and use tiny but less and then go around the forehead. And I'm using two different textures, two different tones, one on the forehead, one here. I just like how this lays down on the forehead better. Always blend your contour up if you're going for that really sharpened effect, which I love. Next, we blend out the contour and she says to pull it up instead of pushing it down. So I don't think I added enough. So I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker shade now and just add a little bit into that just to create more of a shadow. As you can see, it's kind of like a muddy color. And again, I'm just gonna take the brush and just slightly tap over Okay, we're it. gonna go with the excess that's on this brush right here. This is a Sigma Chisel and Trim Contour F77. And then she's just taking the excess of what's on the brush and goes down the sides of the nose. I'm never really good at this. My precision is terrible. I'm just taking it up into my brow. I don't know if she does that. I'm gonna kinda do a little contour up here like so. Oh, we almost didn't contour the lips. Hey, what am I thinking? Her lips, I do like to do the RCMA. I like to go underneath there and then I kinda hit up with the liner. Go right here. And then she actually like contours around her lips. So I'm gonna take that light shade again and she kind of just like follows the outside of her lip line. Here. Foundation's gonna go over top of it anyway. This is how you end up looking. Like you got the juiciest, biggest lips. How this will look on me, but let's see so she definitely does take it into the brow a lot more than i did so let's just reiterate that it's kind of a ready color as well i look like a scarecrow we're gonna go in with the synchro skin radiant lifting from shiseido just a pump or two next is foundation so i'm gonna go ahead and use the maybelline fit me dewy and smooth and she uses a stippling brush and i have one here it's a mineral makeup brush that's all it says so i'm going to use these two and try this out i've never used a stippling brush to blend out foundation so let's see how this works out she does also do her chest but i don't need to today because i'm covered up well it looks like if you use this you don't actually use as much foundation so she goes and does it i took a lot so she starts at the bottom and she says not to go over the contour just so there. now i'm gonna go up kind of blend in a little bit of that jaw contour right i'm not going over the contour contour yet we're gonna wait for that we're gonna stamp 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 bam 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 it's kind of aggressive it's fine take whatever's left go over the forehead this ps is a scott barnes brush this is a stippling brush the number six eight okay so this is the side with the foundation and the side without. It actually looks pretty good. I like it so far. And I love this foundation, so you can't go wrong with it. So even the lips look pretty cool. 
it kind of gave me a more like pouty look. I'm actually going to blot off a little bit of the excess shine from the foundation that has a little bit of oil in it which is good, but I don't want to put powder on top of oil and have it kind of get gummy. Okay, so that's the whole face done. I think it looks really good and I'm actually surprised because there's so much product on my face, but it looks really smooth and effortless. One thing I've learned already so far is that a stippling brush uses a lot less foundation than a normal like kabuki brush this literally gives such a light coverage and also uses so much less foundation i might try this more in the future to be honest one takeaway from here we'll probably recap at the end but just in case i forget i think it looks absolutely stunning with a stippling brush so next she just takes a powder puff and kind of like blots down her face to take away the shine so i don't have the Tutty Blenderful. So I'm just using the sponge that I got off um, she Glam, Shein, and I'm just going to pat over. It's not overly shiny, so I don't mind, but she says it just makes it a little bit gummy. Patting all of that out. Okay, we're gonna put on cream blush. We're gonna do it before we powder. Rowan blush, this stuff is so gorgeous. Just even looking at it, I'm like, I'm in a better mood. Just even looking at it. I'm gonna take a tiny brush. We're going in with a BK Beauty 110. I'm gonna go in, get a little bit of the excess. So next is cream blush. I don't have what she has. I'm gonna use my Scarlet Hill cream blush cheeky stick and um, it's in the shade raspberry. And she uses like a light fluffy brush. I'm just going to use a small one I got off Take A Lot and pick some of that up. I don't know about this brush though. And then she just pats it out on the palm of her hand and then pops that on the cheeks. Oh, that actually looks really nice. It doesn't look as intense and it looks more airbrushed, if I could say that. I usually prefer a denser brush, but this one actually, yeah, it feathers it out really nicely. I used a much more intense color than she did, but I am also brown I'm gonna skin. take a spritz of the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. Boom. And then I'm gonna blot it off. Okay, so I'm just pressing absolutely everything in. I also recommend underneath the eyes, you want to press those creases, which they're gonna happen, out before you go in to powder. Next, she uses a setting spray and I'm using the She Glam Press Refresh Setting Spray, which is my favorite. Just give myself a spritz of that. And then she goes ahead and just presses everything in and I'm just using the same sponge. I also always do this whenever I've used a setting spray, whether it's over powder or between spritzes during my makeup routine, I always just pat everything off just to push it in the skin and not get any like gloss. I am today gonna go into the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance and I'm gonna use, you guessed it, my Letitia Lamac. We're gonna load this up and just really press that on into the corner and on the side of the nose. Next is pressed powder and I'm using my one for my project pan, the Modelite um, Compact Powder and just like a tulip brush, because it looks like that's what uh, it looks like that's what she uses. So I'm just gonna pick that up and make sure we push these. I mean, press these <laughs> creases out again, and we're just gonna go and push that under the eyes. Okay, now we are gonna go in and bake with this Givenchy and feel super fabulous and fancy. This is number two. Next is baking, and I can confidently say that I don't do this very often. The first time I officially did it was in my Meredith video, which was last week. So yeah, I don't expect great results from this. I don't think I have the skin type for it, but let's go ahead and try this. For that today, I'm using, I didn't mention it, but I'm using the ELF HD powder, and it's really, really fine. I love this powder. But we go in and we bake under the eyes first. Baby, you give me ice and fire. I'm not sure if she set the rest of her face. 
it doesn't say it yet, but she goes and does her brows next. So I'm going to do the same. I don't know if I'm baking correctly. <laughs> this looks weird. But anyway, let's leave it at that and go ahead and do brows. And I think I'll just speed through this While one. While it is doing its thing, I am going to do my brows. I'm going in with the Dior Show Brow Styler in 001. Can we tell she's having like a throwback? This is something I recently picked up at Sephora and I have repurchased this brow pencil so many times. So she doesn't do her eyebrow gel yet. She just like fills in her brows. I just use a pencil today. So if they look a little bit strange, I'm sorry. I also do have a pimple in there. So I tried my best. I'm trying to follow kind of what she did. And next she goes ahead, next she goes ahead and does her lips. So um, for lip liner, I am using the Wet n Wild color icon in Chestnut. Let's do some lips. I really am loving this new guy from Tarte. This is a good one. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of butterfly. Then lipstick, and for my lipstick today, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Stoned Rose. And she uses a lip brush to apply it, so I thought we'd use one too. Now I'm gonna go in with Angel from Huda Beauty. Perfect texture, really pretty nude. So another takeaway I've taken from this is that with a lip brush, I think the lipstick and the lip liner blend a lot better. I mean, I've always known to use a lip brush, especially when I'm doing um, lipstick on someone else. The lip, it's much more hygienic with a lip brush, but it really, really feathers in really nicely and blends and creates a really nice ombre. I'm learning a lot today. And because more is more, I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of this overnight lip mask from Laneige. I find. Then she goes in with the overnight lip mask. And I do not have the overnight of the, the, the Laneige lip mask. I do not have. So for this, I'm actually gonna use this one from If It Will Focus from Discam. And it is just a lip therapy with jojoba oil. And I am again going to use the same lip brush. Pick a tiny bit up and just kind of pat that kind of on the center of the lips and mix it up. And it gives it just a more glossy, shiny look. I don't know about longevity because this is kind of like a lip oil and that's a lip mask. So we'll see about that. But I'm just using what I have on hand, like I said. So now she goes in with some, what's it called? Brow gel. And I'm using the Essence Fix It Like a Boss Transparent, Transparent Brow Fixing Gel. I hate this because it is really, really watery. It says it's extra strong, but they lie. But I'm just gonna use it because it's the only other brow gel I have other than the got to be glued. So I'm just gonna brush through my brows, very wet and very messy. This is a really beautiful product. It's called Grande Brow 2-in-1. It's a tinted brow gel and serum. Really enjoying this. I just have a tip of kind of cleaning the wand off before you go in. Let's dust off this bake, shall we? Just lightly, you don't want to press too hard. I like to kind of dust and then kind of pat whatever's left behind in. Same thing. Next, dust off the bake. So I'm just gonna use the same brush I used with a pressed powder. I swear she didn't powder the rest of her face. Hopefully she does that. Otherwise I'm gonna have to do it quickly because I can't afford not to. It's very tacky. Okay, yeah, so let me zoom in. When I bake, it makes my fine lines look a lot more prominent and kind of makes my under eyes look um, crepey. So I don't like that. And I always knew that I didn't really have the skin type for baking, but other than that, like the cheeks of ears, nice and smooth. It's just the under eyes that don't agree with baking at all much makeup I have in my palm of my hand. Now we're gonna set the cream products with corresponding dry products. We're gonna go in with a powder bronzer. This is from L'Oreal. This is the infallible 24 hour wear. I'm obsessed. 
I love how long wear this is, and I also love that it's not crazy pigmented. It blends very, very, very beautifully. So next she goes in with bronzer, but honestly, before I go ahead and do that, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my loose powder and I'm just gonna set my chin. I don't know if she does this, I can't remember. I, didn't, I washed the, it back a couple of days ago, but I'm just gonna set over here and a little bit on my forehead. Maybe she does, but for now I'm just going to do that. For powder bronzer, I'm just using my Essence Contouring Duo and I'm using the lighter shade with an angled brush, just like she does. And we're just gonna go over the cream bronzer and just lock that in and reinforce it. And this I like to just kind of stamp over where I had all that cream contour and it just helps to lock it in tight as well. For powder bronzer, I'm gonna use my one, it's all rubbed off now, but it's from Primark and it is in the shade Rosewood. So I'm just going to go over my blush with this. It's pretty pigmented. So you don't need a whole lot. We're keeping with the drugstore theme and going in with a little bit of L'Oreal. This is in Baby Blossom, one of my favorites. I'm gonna take the brush that I kicked off the bake with and just tap it on over. For highlighter, I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Star Highlighter and just a small, like a small, a big eyeshadow fluffy brush. And just on the high points of the face. I love this highlighter, it's gorgeous. Okay, we're gonna go in with some more Scott Barnes. More is more. Look at this palette. I have loved on this for so long. It is such a good one. I'm gonna go into these kind of pinky shades right over here and literally just kind of graze outward just a tiny little bit. This stuff is potent. And I'm gonna kind of go up the high point of the brow as well. Just kind of try to grab all the light. We're saturating the face. We're setting it with hot air. It just sinks everything into your pores. Make sure you have a good oil cleanser at the end of the day because this jams your makeup in there and then you're just locked in all freaking day long. So again, I'm using the same, what is it called? The same setting spray and she drenches her face. That was almost in my eyeball. As you can see, my face is wet. And then she uses a hairdryer just to dry everything up. So I'm going to mute it here and add some music. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my loneliness. I guess the ignorance is bliss. I can't say that that experience was pleasant. My eyes were on fire, even though I had it on the, lo the <laughs> lowest setting. But mm, I don't feel like that made any difference, but we'll see i guess with the longevity of the makeup then back in with a puff and just push everything in i still feel like i need some more powder my face is quite tacky still and go back in with a puff and press do not drag so freaking smooth when you take the time and do the steps the results they are good i'm going in a little bit more with some powder just okay so she does go in with a little bit more powder but i don't think she picks any up she just uses her brush and just through the t-zone my problem is never i don't mind having a shiny t-zone but if my the parameters on my face are quite sticky. I hate that my, my hair sticking to it. I just think it feels gross. So that's mostly where I would consider powdering. The middle of my face can be a little bit more dewy, but I hate my hair sticking to my face. And I have my hair down probably 90% of the time. Next, she curls her lashes, but I don't have lash curlers on hand so we'll skip that step today then for eyes she takes her bron or a bronzer and i'm just going to use the same one and the lighter shade and she just like she didn't use any eyeshadow primer or anything so hopefully the foundation and the little bit of <laughs> concealer i put in my crease is still 
enough but I would usually go in with a eyeshadow primer but let's just run this yeah it's tacky let's run the bronzer through the crease hers is a lot more orange but anyway just contouring out the eye I guess. I'm gonna take a makeup forever powder this is the matte velvet skin in Y535 I'm gonna take a Letitia Lamac FF6 and just kind of go in the crease and then for a wash of shimmer over the eyelid, I'm going to go, because she says to use a bronzier shade, I'm just going to go with this bronzier. And this is the Mode Elite palette, or Mood eyeshadow palette by Mode Elite. And I'm going to go in with this bronzier, like I said. And then she's going to lighten it up with another one. So I'm just going to use this one over here. So that one and that one. So I'm going to do this one the darkest one i want just a wash of shimmer over the lid we're gonna go in to a little bit of this color down here just like a bronze shimmery i'm sure you have a bronze shimmery on hand and then lighten it up a little bit kind of mixing and i'm gonna go over the lid and kind of a little bit on top of what i placed in the crease then i'm just flipping my brush and going in with a lighter shade and i'm gonna put it like in the inner third of the eye and just blend it in with the bronze oh that actually looks really pretty i haven't used this palette for so long might use it in my next book review if you didn't know i also do book reviews on my channel every friday so Go ahead and check those out. I'll link a couple of the videos below in the description box. Also, remember to subscribe. I'm almost at 500 subscribers, which I'm so excited about. So please share this video and like, subscribe and comment for engagement. Okay, mine turned out a little bit more orangey than bronze, but I really like this. Okay, I don't have a brown pencil. I was looking for it, but I cannot seem to find it. So I'm just going to use a black one and I'm just going to draw it on the top of my lid like she does and then smudge it out with a brush. I'm going to go in with a brown liner from Loon and Aster. This is this in the shade Copper and I'm just going to smudge it and then we're going to take an empty brush and kind of slightly wing it out. I think I need to kind of pull my eyelid, eyelid taut because it's very loose. I don't even think that is very neat. Then I'm just going to take a little, a little smudge brush and I'm just going to, honestly, I need to pull my eyelid. Don't do this, but I need to, yeah, that's subtle. It actually looks really nice. I'm surprised. So mine is, mine is nowhere as intense as hers, but I think it still looks really nice and soft. Next for... Mascara, I'm using my old favorite because I'm trying to use it up. And this is the Essence Lash Princess. Time for mascara. Super into this one from Target. This is PYT. I love the shape of the brush. Does not irritate my eyes. We're going to wiggle at the base, pull it up and out. I like to pull through the center and then I kind of pull toward the nose a little bit. These inner lashes. And then she goes ahead and adds some lashes. So I'm just going to add little corner lashes because I don't like full lashes. I just, I cannot seem to stick them down properly. So I'm going to jump off camera quickly and do that. And then I'll take my hair down while I am at it. And then we'll outro this video. So I just wanted to zoom you guys completely in. Excuse my lashes. They're not cooperating today. So this is my full face. So that is all guys. I hope you like the look. I really like it. I think it looks really like classic and sophisticated. However, there are two main things that I would definitely take away and incorporate into my own routine. And that is this lash is number one, the stippling brush for my foundation. It just uses so much less product and it just diffuses the foundation everywhere and it looks amazing. And then number two is using a lip brush for my lipstick. But other than that, I think it's a big faff and I can achieve a look like this 
doing my normal routine and that whole video of hers was actually 33 minutes I hope mine isn't that long because I didn't speak as much as she did and I focused more on the makeup which I prefer in videos so hopefully you do too but other than that I really like it um would I do it again probably not like this is just too much of a faff and would take too long my normal routine takes long anyway and I don't do the exact steps she does but yeah I'm really happy with it let me know what you guys think and if there's any others you would like me to try but let me know what you guys think down in the comments and I'll be sure to have a look at them but other than that that's it from me guys I'll see you all next week bye